Hello, and welcome to Kindred. We're so glad you're here. My name is Ty, and I'm the worship leader. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we want you to know that no matter what your faith journey looks like, no matter what your background is, you are welcome here at Kindred. If you are new, click connect in the video description below, and we can answer any questions that you may have and help you find your place in our community. Also, if you'd like to see this week's announcements, you can click announcements below and we'll keep you up to speed on all the many things we've got going on. Finally, if you'd like to give to Kindred today, just click give in the video description below because we're able to provide all of our ministries for free because of generous donors like you. So thank you for participating in financial generosity. Once again, we're so glad you're here and we hope you enjoy this service. And welcome to worship. It's good to be with you. Uh, if we've not met before, my name is Daniel. I'm the pastor here. And if this is your first time to tune in with us at Kindred, uh, so glad that you have. Today is a holiday in the church that we call Trinity Sunday when uh, we, we celebrate this mystery that the one God that we believe in as, as Christians uh, is three persons, Father, Son, and, and Holy Spirit. I'll say a little bit more about that and, and why that matters in the sermon in just a bit. Uh, but before we get into that, real quickly, just want to let you know uh, about a 
an event that we've got coming up next Sunday. That's June the, the 19th. It's called Kindred 101. This is an uh, event that we try to do about once a month, and it's geared towards people who are new to Kindred uh, or new-ish to, to Kindred. So if that uh, applies to you, we'd love to see you uh, right after in-person worship next Sunday. It's like a, a casual one-hour gathering, uh, free child care, no registration uh, re- required for this, but we'll uh, hang out with you and, and uh, let you get to know the, the Kindred staff uh, a little bit, and we'll share a bit about our uh, vision and, and values as a, a church, and, and we can offer suggestions for ways that you can get involved uh, in our community if and when you're, you're ready to, to do that, and we can answer any questions that you have about our church uh, as well. So again, if, if you're new or newer to, to Kindred, would love to see you right after in-person worship next Sunday. You can get the details about in-person worship on our website, which is kindrednc.church. All right, that being said, uh, our scripture for today comes from 1 John, and we're looking at chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. And it says this, Dear friends, if God loved us this way, we also ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God remains in us, and his love is made perfect in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he remains in us because he has given us a measure of his spirit. We have seen and testify that the father has sent the son to be the savior of the world. If any of us confess that Jesus is God's son, God remains in us and we remain in God. We have known and have believed the love that God has for us. God is love and those who remain in love remain in God and God remains in them. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, uh, today I want to try to speak to a question that I know that many of us have have wrestled with at some point in our faith journey. Uh, And even if you haven't personally wrestled with this question yourself, uh, I can just about guarantee that you know somebody in your life that that has wrestled deeply with with this question before. Uh, And I bet that for most of us, whether we realize it or not, there is somebody in our life who is planning to to never come to church again because of this question and the the answer that they received uh, to this question. So this is important to to think about. And and here's the, the question. How loving is God? How loving is God? Now, I can't speak for other religions, but, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that virtually all Christians would say, oh, that's, that's actually an easy question. Yeah, God, God is very loving, right? God is extremely loving. I mean, for, for God so loved the world and, and all of that, I'm not aware of, of hardly any churches that would come out and say God isn't loving. And yet, here's what I know, that, that for many of us in the, the churches that we grew up in or some church that, that we were a part of in the past, uh, the, the God that we were introduced to there wasn't actually that loving at all. It's like there was a little bit of false advertising going on because those churches would say God loves everyone. You know, that was the headline. But then there was the fine print. Then there was the fine print. And my guess would be that many of us could, could probably tell stories about exactly where we were when somebody dropped the fine print on us. You know, maybe you were sitting in church listening to a sermon, or you were at summer camp, or you were sitting in a Bible study, or just having a conversation with a Christian friend, and, and whether they said it explicitly or, or it was just implied that they dropped the fine print on you. And the fine print sounds something like this it sounds like, God loves you if, right? God loves you if, as in God loves you if you pray this specific prayer and and invite Jesus into your heart, or God loves you if you truly believe X, Y, and Z, right? Or, or, Or maybe God loves you if you behave a certain way. I know uh, many of us as, as teenagers, uh, it was drilled into us, you know, God loves you if you stay away from parties and you don't drink and you stay pure until marriage and, and all of that. You know, so some of you may have been told that God loves you if you have the, the right sexual orientation or the, the right gender identity. Uh, that The headline says God loves everybody, but then there's the fine print and the fine print says actually God loves you if. Well, I want us to, to think for a, a minute about that word if, because I know that for some of you that that word if is essentially the, the reason that you walked away from church, 
right? For, for others of you, maybe you didn't walk away from church, but but that word if is what's always caused you to kind of struggle with your, your faith because, you know, you may not have thought about it in these terms before, but you've kind of felt it in your gut that as soon as we put an if on God's love, all of a sudden God becomes a whole lot less loving, right? I mean, think about it. As soon as we put an if on God's love, what that means, what that implies is that as a rule, God is actually not loving at all. It implies that, that as a rule, God is actually exclusive and, and God is judgmental, but God will make an exception for you if you meet certain conditions, if you have certain qualifications. And I know for some of you, you were actually taught that this is the gospel, right? Some of you were taught that that's the good news of the Christian faith. That there's this exclusive judgmental God, but this God will give you a pass. This God will give will, will include you in, in God's love uh, if you believe a certain way or you behave a, a certain way or, or whatever, you know? And so I bet some of you have found yourself uh, sitting in church, sitting in a Bible study, talking with a, a Christian person and, and thinking to yourself, really? Is that really what, what God is like? I mean... Uh, God's love is, is an exception to the rule. Do I, do I have to believe that to be a, a Christian? You know, that, that just doesn't sound very loving at all. And, and I bet some of you have found yourself thinking like, uh, even if I meet the conditions, even if I have the, the qualifications and I'm included and, and I'm an insider, well, what about everybody else? You know, what about my friends and family who don't believe like I do? What about my friends and family who don't exactly live by the same moral compass that I live by? Does God not love them? Even though I love them, you know, like, does that mean I'm somehow more loving than God? That that doesn't sound right at all, right? So again, I know I know some of you have wrestled with this. All of us know people who, who have been through this, that, that the headline says God loves everybody, but then there's the fine print. And the fine print says, oh, actually, God loves you if. God loves you if. So here's what I want us to see today, and this is so, so important. What I want us to see is that the truth is that if has no place in the Christian faith. Contrary to what you might have been told, that if has no place in the Christian faith. We're going to see in a minute that sadly, since almost the very beginning, people have been trying to put an if on God's love. But according to Jesus, and according to the people who spent the most time with Jesus, there is never an if on God's love love. And in fact, the truth is that God is actually more loving than any of us can even imagine. Uh, one of the places that we see this most clearly in scripture, I think, is in this passage that we just heard from, from 1 John. So I want to explore this passage uh, with you a, a little bit today because in this passage, John takes this whole idea that God's love is an exception to the rule and, and, God, and John just d- destroys that as we're going to see in, in a second. So if you're somebody who was taught that the good news of the Christian faith is that there's this exclusive judgmental God who will grant you a pass if you meet certain conditions. Buckle up, because John is getting ready to tear that gospel to pieces, and he's going to give us the true gospel, the gospel of Jesus, and we're going to see that gospel is so, so much better. It doesn't even compare. So let's get into this passage, and I'll show you what I mean by that. First, a little context. First John, some of you know this. First John, we call it a book of the Bible today, but originally it was written as a letter. It was written in the first century, late first century. And at that time, if you know your your Christian history, basically Christianity was still pretty much brand new. Uh, that you know it was uh, several decades uh, after Jesus uh, and, and his death and, and resurrection and, and all of that. Uh, but but throughout the Roman Empire, that the Christian faith was, was starting to catch on. It was starting to spread, and so in different cities, churches were were popping up. Well, in that context. There was one little church, and we, we actually don't know exactly where this particular church was located, probably somewhere in the, the Roman Empire or, or thereabouts. But this little church ran into a, a big problem, and, and here's the problem. One day, uh, this little church got a visit from this traveling preacher. I guess this guy would go around and, and preach at, at different churches in, in different places. So this, this traveling preacher, they didn't know him, but, but he just he shows up. Now, what this church didn't know is that this traveling preacher was actually a member of a group called the Gnostics. 
the Gnostics. Some of you may have heard of them without getting into a, a huge history lesson. Uh, basically, the Gnostics were like this quasi-Christian splinter group, and they sort of broke off from mainstream Christianity because they believed that they had special knowledge about Jesus. They believed that they had special knowledge uh, about God that, that other Christians didn't have. And so they believed that they were superior to, to like regular Christians. In fact, they didn't think that regular Christians were, were real Christians at all. This sounds very Christ-like, right? Uh, you, you can see why Gnosticism never really caught on in the, in the mainstream. Well, anyways, this, this traveling preacher shows up at this church, and they don't know that he's Gnostic, uh, and they're good, kind, hospitable Christian folks, and so they decide that the nice thing to do would be to invite this preacher to preach for them on Sunday morning. Now, as a side note, if I'm ever away from Kindred for, for a, a period of time, and while I'm gone, some preacher that you have never heard of, that you know nothing about, shows up and, and asks to, to preach uh, on Sunday, please do not give them a microphone. That's a really bad idea. Uh, but that's basically what happened in, in this situation. So this, this Gnostic preacher, he gets up and he, he delivers this fiery, passionate sermon where he lays out what he believes to be true about God. And then he puts a big, giant if on God's love. Because he says to the congregation, hey, if you believe like I do, if you believe what I've just told you, then God loves you. But if you don't believe this, then you're an outsider and you're not a true Christian and God's love actually doesn't extend fully to you. I know some of you have, have sat through similar sermons yourself, unfortunately, right? Uh, well, when he said that, um, it was like the, the church members had been punched in the gut. They, they got that same queasy feeling that, that some of us know all too well, and they started wrestling with the same kinds of questions that some of us have, have wrestled with in our own faith journey of like, really? Is that really what God is like? You know, uh, Is God really that exclusive? Is God's love really like an exception to the rule in, in this kind of a way? That doesn't sound right. And so a lot of the folks in this little church, that they, they started thinking like, man, I, if that's true Christianity, then like, I don't think I can really fully embrace the, this Christianity thing. If, if that's what this is, like, I'm, I'm not sure church is really for me. Suddenly, the, this little church was plunged into to questioning how loving is God? How loving is God? Well, as they're struggling with this, news of their struggle reaches uh, one of the early church leaders, a guy named John. Now, if you were with us for our last sermon series on the book of Revelation, uh, you know about John because John is the same dude who wrote Revelation. John was one of Jesus' first followers, and he, he went on to become a, an important leader in the early church. So, so news of this church's struggle reaches John, and it, as soon as he hears that they're wrestling over this question of, of how loving is God, uh, is God, John knows that he needs to act, and he needs to act very very, very quickly because he recognizes right away that this little church is that they're starting to lose sight of one of the most important things that that Jesus teaches us about God. And so I think if John could have, he would have hopped on a plane straight away, but it was the first century. They didn't have planes. So he did the next best thing. He, he fires off a letter to this church. And that letter is what we now know as First John. Uh, so that's what that, what that is. Um, here in chapter 4 of First John, John is addressing head-on this question of how loving is God. So let's see what John has to say here. Uh, he begins this chapter by saying this. He says, Many false prophets have gone out into the world. In other words, John is saying, Hey, uh, just because somebody is going around calling themselves a preacher, that doesn't mean that they're preaching the truth about God. So, so beware, don't be taken in, you know, be, be discerning as, as you listen to, to, to people talk about God. And then he says, uh, every spirit that doesn't confess Jesus is not from God. Uh, AKA, he's, he's reminding them, hey, as Christians, we believe that, that we know who God is and we know uh, what God is like first and foremost through Jesus. I mean, that's kind of the filter that, that we can use as, as we're uh, receiving uh, people's ideas about God, that, that Jesus is how we know who God is, first and foremost. Now, now, brace yourself. Brace yourself here, because a few verses later, John drops what is one of the most powerful verses in the entire Bible. Get ready, because John is about to answer this question of how loving is God once and 
for all. And part of what makes what John says here so, so powerful is who is saying this to us. It's, it's John himself. Think about this. Uh, John, the guy writing this to us, John knew Jesus as well as anybody who has ever lived. Did you know? Did you know there were only two people in the entire world who ever followed Jesus before John? So he's like as OG as it gets, right? And this means that, uh, that, that John was there for things like the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, John was there for things like the feeding of the 5,000. He was one of the dudes helping to pass out bread. Uh, John was there for a whole bunch of times with Jesus that none of us even know about because they weren't recorded. Nobody wrote it down. Uh, John was there for the Last Supper. John saw Jesus get arrested. John saw Jesus get crucified. John saw the resurrected Jesus multiple times. John, think about this, John touched Jesus' resurrection body. Can you imagine? And John saw Jesus ascend back into heaven. And so when John tells us what Jesus is like, when John tells us what God is like, John is speaking with some serious authority, I think, and we should sit up and and pay attention to this. So in the middle of this passage here, John says, hey, look, let let me just try to settle this once and for all. You want to know what God is really like? You want to know how loving God really is? I don't care what some wackadoodle preacher came in and told you, okay? Let me tell you what I learned directly from Jesus, John says. And he boils it down and he sums it up in in three words. You ready for this? 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, he says, God is love. God is love. Love. How loving is God, John? God is love. To, to which we might say, okay, uh, hang on there, John. Just just hold up a minute. Your, your grammar got a little funky there, right? You, you, you mean to say uh, God loves like, like a verb. Like love is something God does. Love is something that, that, that God feels, right? And, and John says, no, no, no. I meant exactly what I said. John says, I meant exactly what I said. Love is not just something that God does. Love is not just something that God feels, though that's, that's true too. But John says, what I learned directly from Jesus is that love is who God is. So he's saying, I don't care what anybody else tries to tell you. I'm here to tell you that God is so loving that God is love. Wow. Wow, so, so what does John mean by, by that? Here's what he's, he's driving at. Here's what he's driving at. Uh, one of the things that Jesus teaches us about God is that God is Trinity. God is Trinity. I mentioned earlier that today is Trinity Sunday in the church, so it's a good uh, day for us to, to take a couple minutes to think about this, uh, that, that through the life and ministry of Jesus... Uh, One of the things that we see as as we read about Jesus in Scripture, one of the things that John saw live because he was there, is that within the one God, there are these three divine persons, the the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So does that mean that that as Christians we actually believe in three gods? Well, we'll no. And and here's how this relates to this statement that, that God is love. Uh, that that uh, it, what we see in the life and ministry of Jesus is that the, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are so united in love. They're so united in love that that's what makes them together one God. Now, as I say that, I, I understand that that's a mystery that none of us can ever fully explain, right? I mean, we, we just can't fully wrap our minds around this mystery of the Trinity. And I know every time I talk about the Trinity, some of you are like, okay, that sounds like a bunch of theological mumbo jumbo. I don't know what that's about. I don't know why that matters. Well, well, here's why it matters. If God is Trinity, then that means love is not just something that God does. Love is not just something that, that God feels, but love is who God is. It means that the love that binds together the Father and Son and Holy Spirit as one God, that love is at the heart of God's very being. In other words, you could put it like this, that love is literally what God is made of. That's the good news of the Trinity. Uh, love is what God is made of. Pretty incredible to to think about. Well, that's what John saw 
in Jesus. That's what John discovered about who God is through Jesus, that, that, that no matter what anybody else tries to tell us, the, the message here is, look, that's the true gospel. That that's the original gospel. That, that's the real good news of the Christian faith, that, that there is no if on God's love. Why? Because God is Love. God's love is never an exception to the rule. Why? Because God is love. The God who meets us in Jesus, the God that we've come to call the, the Trinity, this God is love. This God is love. Now, I hope as I say that, there are some of you listening to this today who are like, God, this is amazing. Why didn't somebody tell me this uh, earlier? I hope that some of you are, are having your mind blown in a, in a powerful way. Uh, but I know that there's probably others of you who are kind of thinking to yourself like, yawn, uh, old news. Okay, uh, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. I've been thinking, I've been thinking that since I was born, Daniel. Uh, old news, I, I get all this. Uh, if that's you, uh, I, I know where you're coming from. And I'm genuinely glad that you have never doubted God's love. I mean, that's, that's a really good thing. Uh, but uh, here's something that I don't want any of us to, to miss, whether all of this is new news for you today or, or whether this is old news for you. Uh, either way, I don't want us to miss this because this gets to the, the heart of our mission as a church. This gets to the heart of why we started Kindred Church in the, the first place. Uh, whether you realize it or not, you're surrounded every single day by people who do not know this. Do you realize that? Uh, Whether you know it or not, you're surrounded every single day by by friends, family members, uh, coworkers, neighbors, who who do not know that God is love. Uh, I mean, all of us are, are surrounded every day by people who put on a brave face and they, they show up in the world and they pretend like nothing's wrong, but on the inside, they doubt that they're lovable. Right? Or, or, or they, they think, you know, if, if anybody could see the real me, you know, the, the me behind this mask that I'm wearing, then, then I wouldn't be lovable. I mean, some of us struggle with this ourselves, right? And these folks are, they're doing all kinds of things to try to become lovable. And that can be so harmful at times, right? These people are doing all kinds of things to, to try to fight that feeling of, of not feeling lovable. And for many of these people, they've been told somewhere on their journey, they've been told this lie that God loves you if, right? And so they've concluded that, that either God doesn't love them or God doesn't love them fully, or, or they've just decided like this, this Christian God is, is just not for me, right? And so, so these people, they need to know what we all need to know. They need to know what John tells us here. They need to know the truth about who God is. They need to know that God is actually more loving than, than any of us can even wrap our minds around. That, that, that God sees every single one of us for exactly who we are. God sees behind the mask. God sees the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And still, God loves us. Why? Because God can't not love us. I mean, God is love. So, so somebody in your life needs to hear that right now. I, I promise you, somebody that you know needs to hear this message. So I wonder, who is that person? You know, do, does somebody come to mind? Is there somebody uh, on your heart as, as I say that? And I wonder, uh, how can you share this message with that person? Uh, maybe it's that you find a, a time so sometime soon to, to just like bring this up in conversation and just talk about God and, and talk about God's love. Uh, I know some of you are starting to, to sweat and, and shake out of nervousness just me saying that. Uh, if that's you, maybe it doesn't have to be that intense. Okay, you, you could just find an opportunity to invite that person to church. You know, we, we've, we've tried really hard to, to build this thing called Kindred Church where, where people can come and experience the, the kind of divine love that, that we believe in. And, and, you know, I think for many of you that the reason that you're involved with, with Kindred is because you feel that divine love when, when you're participating in this community. So let's share that gift with, with somebody else 
Who needs it? If inviting somebody to church feels like too big of a step for you right now, uh, maybe it's as simple as sending somebody a link to this sermon and just saying like, hey, uh, I heard this today. Would, would love to know what you think uh, about this. You know, I don't know how you reach out to the person who needs to hear this, but, but somebody in your life needs to hear this right now. And our mission as a church, please don't forget this. Uh, our mission as a church, and, and if you consider yourself part of our church, that means this is your mission too. We want to share this message of God's inclusion love. We want to share this message of God's expansive love with as many people as possible. Uh, why is that? Is it because we have dreams of becoming a, a mega church? No, that, that's not it at all. It's because we know that when a person comes to terms with just how deeply they're loved by God, it changes their life. Many of us know that from our own experience. That's our own story, right? And so we want to share that with as many people as possible because when, when, when a person's life is changed, the, the world begins to change as well. So, so this message really has the power to change the world. So here's the bottom line uh, today. Here, here's what I want you to know. No matter what anybody tries to, to tell you, there is no if on God's love because the God who meets us in Jesus, the God that we've come to call Trinity, this God is love. Don't ever forget that. God is love. Let me pray for us. A loving God, a gracious God, we are uh, so thankful to you for, for simply who you are. God, on this Trinity Sunday, as we're uh, kind of wrestling with this whole mystery of like, you're one God, but you're Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Lord, we don't know how to fully make sense of that. That's a mystery that our human brains just, just can't ever fully comprehend, but that's okay, God, because we don't have to fully explain it. We don't have to, to fully understand it to, to know that it's true and, and to celebrate it, God, because we, we know what it means. It means that, that love is literally what you're made of, and, and that's such an incredible thing to, to contemplate, God. When we grasp how deeply you love us, uh, it changes our lives. It changes our perspective on, on so many of the, the problems that we have and the, the, the weight that we feel in different ways, God. Today, I, I just want to pray especially for uh, anybody and everybody who has heard this, this false gospel of, of God loves you if, or that can do such damage in a person's faith journey. It can do such damage in a person's life in, in all kinds of ways, God. Uh, so where that's been received, that message, God, bring healing, bring restoration, God, and, and help us at Kindred to be the kind of church that is so clear about the true gospel, the original gospel, the gospel of Jesus, that, that God is, is love. Lord, help us to, to always be about that message faithfully. God, we thank you that we get to embody your love together, that we get to communicate it to each other, what, what a gift this community is. Uh, so we thank you for that, and we pray all of this in the name of the one who lived and died and rose again to prove once and for all how deeply you love all of us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, real fast, friends, here, uh, but before we go, uh, if you're new to Kindred Church, as I said at the beginning, uh, join us for Kindred 101 next Sunday. would love to see you there. Uh, also, I'd love your contact information. Uh, I won't spam you or anything. I just want to reach out and, and say, hey, uh, there's the, a link in the description here that says connect. So click on that, leave me your information, and uh, I'll reach out and say hey later this week. Uh, also, uh, be sure to check out the uh, announcements link in the description, and that'll keep you up to speed on the different ways that you can stay involved and, and be engaged with our kindred community. Uh, and of course, if you're local, we would love to always see you in in-person worship. There, there's just simply no substitute for, for getting in the same room at the same time with, with other folks and, and worshiping uh, together. Well, with that, friends, I uh, hope you have a great week and may the peace of Christ 